All right, everybody, you might be wondering what's going on. I got a lot going on here. Uh, it's really loud in my house right now with everybody being here. And so I thought, oh, I'll go outside and record for you guys. But I got set up, got everything ready, and it started to rain. So I came back inside, and here I am. I still got my coat on and everything, but it's okay. All right, so today uh, we looked at the book of James. We, we read the whole letter of James, um, and we were talking about obedience. obedience. And so I want to just highlight for us a, a few key things here. Uh, we're not going to look at the whole book of James. I just want to look at James 1.1 1, 1 and James 2.14. 1.1, James 1.1, 1, 1, I love this because if James is writing this whole letter from the perspective of our need to become fully obedient to God and to Christ, he gives us, he, he puts it right out there from the very beginning. He says, this letter is from James a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's like, look, I'm going to be hitting you with a whole bunch of stuff that you need to kind of, you know, be mindful of, check yourselves on, but know that I first have made myself a slave to God and to Jesus. So he's, he's laying it out for us right from the beginning. And then in chapter 2, verse 14, James says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? What good is it if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions, by the way that you live and the things that you do? And that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. So we're going to be looking at this uh, over the course of the week. It's going to be the theme for all of the Daily Dose videos. So if you haven't been checking those out, go to the YouTube channel and uh, subscribe to that. And then there's a playlist called Daily Dose. All the Daily Dose videos are in there. You can check them out and you can share them with your friends if you feel led. So James is saying he's a slave of God. And then he's reminding us what good is it if we say that we have faith, but we don't show it by our actions, by the way that we live. So one of the things that I had shared previously was um, the need for every believer, especially right now in this season, to exercise the ability or develop the ability to talk to the Lord in prayer, ask and hear what the Lord is saying to you, to you, and then do it. It's as simple as that. Lord, what do you want me to do? And then you just do it and you trust that the rest is up to him and in his hands. So what I want to caution us on today is as you're doing that, as you're genuinely seeking the Lord for, you know, Lord, what do you want me to be doing right now? Please don't look around at what everyone else is doing and assume that that's what you should be doing because that's what everybody else is doing. Um, don't look at what people are posting about on social media and assume that it's God speaking to you that, you know, oh, maybe I should be doing this. I'm not saying that those things are bad. Just don't take it the wrong way. Like, see it for what it is, okay? Those things are encouragements, uh, and hopefully they draw you to the Lord, but don't take that necessarily as your own unless God specifically tells you so. So, because what happens is, here, let me, let me explain. What happens is sometimes when you see things that other people are doing or what other people are posting about, you, f you start to feel this obligation like, oh man, like, you know, this person is doing such great stuff or, you know, these people, this group of people, like, I should be doing, I should be doing, I should be, I should be, I should be, should be, should be. And we get so caught up in that I should be doing this and that, that we can tend to like defeat ourselves and just be like, you know what, I just, I'm just not going to do anything because, I, you know, I don't know. So obligation is not the same as inspiration. Obviously, it's better, we're going to be most effective when we're inspired, when we're like, you know, I, I believe that God is calling me to this. You can 
you can walk through fire, you can pass through the water, you can scale a wall, you can do all these things uh, according to the word of God when God is the one who's giving you the strength to do it. If you're doing something out of obligation, you're probably going to fall short on that. But here's, here's an interesting thing. Even when you choose to do the right thing, okay, when you choose to do the right thing, even out of obligation, if you're doing it out of a heart to obey the Lord and his word, so are you seeing the difference there? You can do the right thing out of a sense of obligation to the Lord, and it can become for you an opportunity to grow, for your faith to grow, for your obedience to to God to grow. And I will tell you this, even if you find yourself at that place right now where you're like, I don't, I don't really feel inspired, but I'm like, you know, if this is what God says I'm supposed to do, then you know what? I'm going to do it, you know, by faith and just trust. That's okay. (laughs) That's okay. Your obedience is being developed and it's growing in that And this is what's going to happen. The inspiration is going to start to come. It might not be there at first, but it's going to start to grow in you. The inspiration is going to start to grow in you as you start to see God working in you. Even though you started out out of obligation, God's going to start to do a work in your heart. You're going to start to see him at work through the things that you're doing, through your actions, through your um, obedience. And it's going to actually become for you inspiration to obey him even more. Amen. So here's the, here's the tough part. Uh, not everything that God is going to ask you to do when you ask him, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Not everything he's going to direct you to do is going to be fun for you. Not everything is going to be exciting for you. Not everything is going to be glamorous. Um, yeah. It's it's not uh, the Christian life is not a life of glory and fame. It's a life of servanthood and obedience to the Lord. Um, and honestly, some of the things that you're going to be asked to do are going to just genuinely feel like plain old work. Like it's just going to be work for you. Um, but again, that's okay. And let me give you two examples of how we know uh, that that's okay. If you're a parent. You understand that part of the joy of parenting also comes with uh, interrupted sleep and needing to change dirty diapers at all hours of the day and night and uh, people needing to eat and (laughs) all these things. Um, Something as simple as having to read the same book over and over and over again if you've got a, a toddler who's in that developmental stage where... Um, they're not reading yet, but they're reading by memorizing. They love to hear the same story over and over and over again because it helps them to memorize and it gives them confidence. So we can see that doing something out of obligation, you might not feel like reading that book again. You might not feel like changing that dirty diaper. You might not feel like getting up in the middle of the night to um, feed or or help your, your child who needs you. But even when you do it out of obligation, there's something good that's being built in you and there's a bond between the two of you that's being built. That's the same bond that we can develop with our Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, when we obey, even if it's out of a sense of obligation. Are you guys tracking with me? So the other example is if you're a homeowner. If you're a homeowner, you understand that part of the Um, part of the responsibility of having ownership of a thing, in this case, a a home, uh, requires effort and work from you. There's there's, um, responsibility to care for that thing. And so, you know, practical things like weeds are going to have to be pulled. The grass is going to have to get cut. um, And it seems like no matter how often you clean, things just keep getting dirty. Uh, No matter how many times you organize and straighten up, things just keep getting messy, especially if you have kids. (laughs) And so you understand that even though some of these things like, I mean, pulling weeds, I'm looking outside at my 
some in my yard. <laughs> pulling weeds is not fun for me. I don't like look forward to going out and pulling weeds, but I appreciate the um, I appreciate the way it looks. I appreciate the finished product, and that is what God is going for with us. That even when we don't feel like it, and yet we step out in obedience, like God, I don't, oh, I don't feel like doing this, God. I don't even want to believe that it's you that's telling me to do this. But if it's in his word, we can step out in obedience. And God is like, you know what? You're going to appreciate the finished result of your obedience. Hallelujah. There is a joy that comes. There's a blessing that comes in obedience, only in obedience. The joy and the blessing that come from obedience are a joy and a blessing that come from no other thing but obedience and doing the will of God in your life. And I love that we can even see that in Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples that there was a that he had a food that they knew nothing about. He said, I have a food that you don't know anything about. And they were like, what? What's he talking about? And so he has to explain it to them. And he's like, look, my food, my sustenance is to do the will of my father who sent me. Isn't that amazing? That's what God wants for us as we obey. He wants to satisfy us. He wants to meet our needs as we, as we step out in obedience to him. So you don't have to be afraid, brothers and sisters, to step out in faith when God leads you to do so. Don't do something just because somebody else is doing it or just because you know, you're seeing it all over the place or whatever. Do it because you've prayed about it, you've asked the Lord to show you, and this is what you feel he's telling you to do. Why? Because, like James said in the opening of his letter, I am a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I bless you in your journey of obedience with God, whether you're just at the very beginning of that journey and you're like, I don't even know what this looks like. Contact us. We want to help you. We want to walk with you. That's what discipleship is, is learning from other people and from the word of God, how to obey God, how to apply it to your life so that you're not just living by faith, but that your faith is producing fruit in actions. And if you are, if you've been serving the Lord for a long time and you're like, you know what? Thank you. Like, I just need this fresh, um, kind of, you know, encouragement to, uh, obedience and to a life of obedience to not settle as we, uh, live in our, our walk with the Lord longer and longer. And as we get older, we tend to have to fight or resist that urge to settle, to retire, your faith never retires. Your assignment from God never retires until you take your last breath or God takes you to be with him, whichever comes first. You are on assignment. You are a soldier of Christ. You are a slave of God. Serve him willingly. Obey him in everything. In the name of Jesus, we're here for you to help you. If you need someone to walk alongside you and encourage you in that, young, old, doesn't matter. We're here for you. We love you. We bless you. <laughs> Look for those additional videos coming out uh, Monday through Friday of this week to uh, encourage us. We're going to continue to look at specific things in the book of James, in the letter from James. So I will see you guys next time. God bless.